Hello Instant Potters! Today I want to actually show you how to make a quiche in your Instant Pot. Uh, this one happens to be a crustless quiche. That's just how I prefer them. Uh, but if you like a crust on yours, you can definitely you know, put a crust in there. You may have to increase the cooking time a little bit. I'm not 100% sure because I've never actually done it. But anyway, uh, I'm going to put the recipe and the ingredients and amounts in the comments of this post. And then I'm going to take you through the video to show you the steps of how to actually do a quiche in your Instant Pot. It's actually a lot of fun. I hope you enjoy this. All right, let's get started. First thing I did was I cracked six eggs into a large mixing bowl. Um, I guess this is more of a measuring cup and I like to do that just because it has the handy dandy pour spout and it has the handle. Eh, you can use a mixing bowl, it doesn't really matter. So put those in and then I'm going to also add the half a cup of cream. You can use half and half, you can use milk, I mean it's really up to you. Quiche is just one of those wonderful and very versatile recipes. Okay, and I also like to add a little pinch of salt. These are my salt pigs, aren't they cute? And I also like to add a pinch of pepper. Now I prefer the coarse ground. You may like the finely ground. Maybe you like to use one of those pepper mills. Hey, it's all good. So I'm gonna go ahead and just get a whisk and a whisk this mixture up really, really well. And then I'll come back and we can add the rest of our goodies. I've got that all nice and whisked up and the next thing I'm going to do is add some Swiss cheese that I grated earlier. This is about a cup and I'm just going to add that right into the egg and milk mixture. At this point I ditch this uh, whisk because all the cheese gets stuck in there and I just don't want to spend time messing with it. So I move on to the spatula, it's just a little easier. Okay, so give that a quick mix. And then the next thing that I like to do, only because I love garlic, and you can obviously omit this step if you want to, but I stick the garlic in my garlic press, and the garlic press has those little holes on the bottom. You can tell this one is very, very well used. Um, and the reason why I do that, I don't really like to bite into chunks of garlic. Maybe you do, and so in that case, you can go ahead and mince your garlic, but I'm gonna just smash it through this thing and stir it in. So I can't do that with one hand, so I'm gonna go do that and I'll be right back. Garlic is all mixed in, and the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just dump in the bacon that I cooked earlier. I had it on a paper towel, so it's just gonna go right in here. This is probably the least uh, elegant way to do it, but gets the job done. The other thing is I sauteed onions and mushrooms uh, earlier with a little bit of the bacon grease. I know, very naughty. And I also added a little bit of cooking sherry because I just love how yummy it is. Uh, another thing I do is I like to add a little bit of pepper at that time and just a pinch of um, salt because that kind of helps release the moisture and I like my onions and mushrooms uh, really moist. So in it goes. Another not so elegant way, but hey, I'm a very casual cook. There we go. So I'm just going to stir all this stuff in here and get it all submerged. It doesn't have to be perfect because you're going to have to pour it into another vessel anyway. All right, good enough. Or as my father-in-law used to say, good enough for who it's for. Anyway. All right, so uh, let's go get our uh, baking dish ready, and then we're going to start getting the Instant Pot ready. I'll be right back. So you need a one-quart baking dish, and you can use any kind of baking dish you want as long as it fits in the Instant Pot comfortably. I happen to have this one in my drawer, and um, I sprayed it with some nonstick spray. It is definitely oven safe. I don't know if you can read it here, if it'll focus, there we go. So it says oven, dishwasher, and microwave safe. So I think that's, you know, a really important thing. You don't wanna just be putting anything in there. At this point, it's time to add all that yummy goodness to your baking dish. 
So I'm going to just take this and pour it right on in there. And it took a little bit to discover that six eggs was the magic number. I usually make my quiches with seven eggs or nine, depends on how many people are going to be over. And I just realized that omitting one of the eggs was definitely the best way to do it. Okay, so mine kind of mounded up in the middle a little bit, so I'm just going to submerge the ingredients, spread them around a little bit. You know, my fancy camera work, I'll tell you what, I think they're going to have to call me the right-handed cook or something because I'm always just doing this video stuff with one hand, but whatever, it works. Okay, so there we go. It's a beautiful thing. Now it's going to puff up a little bit, you know, it's, it might even be a little bit too full right now, but like I said, I'm kind of a casual baker, cook, etc. Right, I'm going to try, I got this kind of a tripod thing here, and I'm going to actually use two hands, believe it or not. And let's see if I can do it. Okay, so earlier I cut a piece of foil and I sprayed just a little bit of baking spray on there because if this does puff up very much, um, at least it won't stick to the tin foil too much. And you know, I'm just not really that worried about it, so I'm just going to put it on here. Um, it'll trap heat, but the other thing is it will also kind of help keep some of the moisture out. And if some moisture gets in there, it's really not that big of a deal. You can just, just like what I do with my cheesecakes, you know, if there's a little bit of moisture on top, I just take a paper towel and dab it on there and it whisks up the moisture and, you know, no big deal. Okay. So now this is all ready to be cooked. Well, let's get the Instant Pot ready. That's a little bit bright. I'm going to dial it down just a little bit. There we go. Okay, so the first thing that I do is I go ahead and I'm going to use a cup and a half of water for this. Uh, when you use a little bit more water, it helps build up a little bit more pressure. I think that it cooks um, maybe a little bit better that way, maybe a little bit faster. I'm not really sure of the science behind it, but I know that when I add a little bit more water, uh, I tend to get better results on my cheesecakes and on the quiche. So there you have it. And the other thing that I do is I start by putting it on the saute mode. So I hit the saute button right here and it's going to start heating up and I like to preheat when I pressure cook some things. And the reason why is just because it'll take less time to get to pressure. Okay, I had to ditch that tripod thing. It was driving me crazy. Okay, here we go. So I've got the water in there, but before it gets hot, I'm gonna go ahead and put my trivet in there. So this is just the trivet that came with the pot. And you know, I don't even bother putting the handles up. I just leave them down. It's It doesn't matter to me. Um, what does matter though is how I'm going to get this thing out of the Instant Pot when it's done because even though it has these little handles, there's not enough clearance for me to get in there and pull them out, you know, with something. So I'm going to do the same thing I do for my cheesecakes and I'm going to go ahead and bring this thing back into focus. There we go. And then I'm going to use a foil sling. So a foil sling, basically I took a great big piece of foil. And this one's really well used, but let's see if I can show you. Here we go. And I folded it over three times. So this is a fold, and then this is another fold. And I'm not really sure how long it is, maybe three feet long, something like that, two and a half. Um, and this is just a wonderful little thing. I've used this for so many things, and it still lasts. I'm actually really surprised. Now, I know a lot of people buy those um, silicone slings, you know, there's lots of neat little uh, things that you can get, but I just happened to make this one, and so far I haven't needed to use anything else, and uh, I really like it. So, meanwhile, our water is heating up in here, and I'm going to go ahead and just let it get a little bit warmer before we go on to the next step. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put the baking dish in the middle of the sling. So just grab it and just pop it. I think I'm going to turn the handles out this way. I think that'll be easier. And then I just go like this and just kind of make sure I have the center. Okay. And then next I will actually put it in the pot. Okay. 
Well, now I'm going to put it in there. I'm working alone, so my photography has to be a little tricky. But here it is, and I'm just going to set it down in there. And then what I like to do, well, there's really not much else you can do, just fold over the foil, and there you go. And you can see how in saute mode, the water is warm now. So that's a pretty good thing. Um, so what I'm going to do, though, is go ahead and I'm going to turn it off. And then I know that I want to cook this for 30 minutes, so I'm going to hit manual. And then the plus or minus button will let me uh, choose a time, so I'm going to go just go up to 30. There we go. Easy peasy. And the next thing I need to do is put the lid on. Okay. So once again, you want to go like right about 11 o'clock. Now see how my pin popped up? That will happen sometimes when you put your lid on and it's warm and people are like, oh my gosh, because it's not going to let you turn it. Um, there's no pressure yet, so just pop your finger in there and then turn it. There you go. And then just turn your little knob to the ceiling. I'm going to scooch it over here so you can see a little bit better. Okay. So venting, ceiling. And then just make sure it's over there. They're wobbly. It's okay. Just set it that way. All right. Your lid is on, you're on ceiling, you're on manual mode. Uh, it defaults to high pressure, and that is what you want to use for this one. So, um, 30 minutes. When you first turn it on, it will just say on until the pressure is all built up. As soon as it has adequate pressure, it will flip over to the 30 minutes that we just chose. And then it's going to go ahead and cook for 30 minutes. Uh, when it's done, I am going to go ahead and do a 10-minute natural release. And, um, you, you know, I've explained this before. You can do a quick release or you can do a natural release. I choose to let it sit just a little bit longer. I seem to get better results that way. It's a pretty thick quiche, so that little extra time, I think, really helps. Um, so we're just going to come back and see it when it's all done. Uh, meanwhile... Just so you know, when it builds up pressure, you might see some steam coming out of here and it might spit a little bit. Again, perfectly normal. It's just, you know, getting ready and building up the pressure. I mean, something's got to come out of there, you know, while it's doing its thing. And it's perfectly normal. Okay, I'll see you back here in a bit. So, our 30 minutes is up and it beeped to let me know that it was done. And so now it is in the natural release state as I like to call it. Basically I'm not going to do anything to it. It's going to start counting up. See there's one minute that just went by on there and that means that it has been naturally releasing pressure for one minute. You can't really hear anything or see too much but the steam that's been built up in the pot is just very slowly dissipating and it's doing it naturally. And so I'm going to wait until that one uh, turns into a 10, and that'll be my 10-minute release. And then we'll come back after that and finish up the process. But I just wanted to show you this part. Okay, the time has come. I know it says 11 and not 10. I got caught up doing something else. It happens. Anyway, so it's all done. So I'm going to go ahead and just turn it off. And I'm going to release the rest of the pressure. So I'm going to come up here. Uh, I always use a wooden spoon or something. I don't really want to get my hand near there, just in case. So what I like about the wooden spoon is I can stick this hole. Oops, where am I? Right here. And it fits right over that neat little valve. And then just pull it towards me. And see, because it's been naturally... Oh, and there goes the pin. Uh, because it was naturally releasing for so long, there just was not much else uh, left in there. And that's okay. So here we go. I can turn the lid. Again, I always open it away from me. Let it kind of drip in there a little bit. And then again, the Duo has the neat little holder and I can just set it there. And this is really great considering I'm making these videos with one hand. Okay, but I'm gonna have to set this down and use two hands for the next part. So once again, I will be right back. This angle might look a little bit cattywampus, but uh, we'll see if you can actually see what I'm doing here. I'm going to go ahead and just 
use the sling and I'm going to get that quiche out of the Instant Pot. It's not too hot. I'm just going to be really careful. There's a little bit of extra moisture on there, not too bad. And then I'm going to set it down here on this cooling rack. And it's not too bad, so I'm going to just go ahead and get the sling kind of literally out of the picture here. All right. And I'm going to go back to one-handed so you can see what I'm doing. I'm a little bit excited about this. This is the moment of truth. <laughs> I hope it turns out. Everybody's watching. Ooh, that looks so good. Not too jiggly. Not overdone. I would say that was a success. Now, cooking times might vary. Uh, it's going to depend on how much stuff you have in your quiche. So if you like more onions and more mushrooms and that sort of thing, or maybe even a little bit more milk or cream, it's going to have to cook a little bit longer. So it's okay if you get it out of the Instant Pot and you take off the foil and it's really, really jiggly in the middle. Um, just cover it back up, use your sling, put it back in the pot, close it up, um, set your manual you know, pressure for, I don't know, maybe another five minutes or so. Let it do another 10 minute uh, natural release if you have to. And then pull it out and, you know, and see what your results are. But uh, I'd say we did pretty good today. So the next thing I'm going to do is just let this cool fully and I'm going to I don't know, dig in with a spoon or something. I'm not sure. This looks pretty good. My mouth is watering. <laughs> oh gosh. Anyway, well, I appreciate you watching my silly little videos. It's just a lot of fun. And I just thought you guys might enjoy learning how to make a quiche in your instant pot. All right. Thank you and have a wonderful day, guys. Bye.